Hello amazing Hope family and welcome to my conservatory again and welcome to this beautiful Thursday and an opportunity to collectively pray together. Before we do that, can I just remind you that we are going to be actually gathering for the first time at the Hub building, 30 people for our first prayer meeting. I think that's the great way to start. It was Mark Bullen's idea to have our first meeting as a prayer meeting. So we're going to do that Monday the 3rd. And if you haven't booked in already, there's a few places left. So you can book in on our um, uh, church app, uh, at Church Suite, and on our, our website. Um, just to uh, say that uh, because of that, there won't be a pause and pray next week. We will do it again on the 13th. And then the following week, on the 17th, on the Monday the 17th, we will have our second prayer meeting in August. Now, for those who are watching are over 60, you should have had an invitation to our Zoom tea party. It's going to be on Monday the 10th of August at 3 p.m. And I'm going to be judging what cakes you bring to this Zoom meeting. So have your cup of tea ready and your cake. And as uh, Kylie's already said, I think we have to give a prize for the most deliciously looking cake. Uh, but it'll be a great time to catch up, to pray for one another and just to encourage one another in this uh, season of isolation. So we're going to do that. So as always, we're going to be using John Wilthew's pattern of entering various rooms and to pray in those rooms. In fact, today we're only going to go into two rooms. We're going to go into the Thanksgiving room and what I've called the, the names room or the naming room. So for Thanksgiving, let's enter the Thanksgiving room. And um, what I want you to do is I want you to uh, make a list of the certain things I'm going to say. And then we're going to pause and give thanks over those things. OK, so the first one is I want you to make a list of the blessings that you've received since lockdown. Make that list and then pause and pray over that list. Got that? OK, so it's time to make the list, pause and pray. Now, why not now make a list of all the prayers that have been answered, that you've prayed or that you've seen happen uh, over this period of lockdown? And let's give thanks for the fact that God has been so at work through answering our prayers. So make a list, pause and pray. Next. What God is doing over across the world is amazing. You may have picked up many stories on Facebook or just on the news or whatever in the, the various social media. Um, just note what you know God has been doing during this time across the world. And now pause and pray and give thanks. And then finally in this room, uh, what has God been teaching you during lockdown? That's that's a great exercise to engage in. Write down you, the things that you think God has been teaching you and then use those as an opportunity to thank him for his instruction and guidance. And also ask him what, what ways can you further learn from those things that he's been said to you? Are there any things that you should be putting into practice as a result? So make your list, pause and pray. So now we're going to move out of the Thanksgiving room into the naming room. Now, let me say what I mean by this. Names in the Bible are not merely labels. They are creative. They declare destiny and they pronounce the very nature of the personal thing that they're describing. And in the Bible, God communicates much about who he is by the names that he gives to himself. God has revealed himself to us in so many ways. Each name that he has given himself reveals something of who he is as a person. So we're just going to pray through some of the names of God. And I'll try to be as practical as I can be. So the first name, Al Shaddai, Al Shaddai, the almighty God. There is nothing that he cannot do. So. He can give a vaccine. He can give us a cure. He can give us the uh, ways to treat people who are in COVID 
and to avoid their death. I think this is the time to make our boldest prayers over this crisis. Because after all, he is the almighty God. There is nothing that he cannot do. So make those bold prayers. God will never be telling you off for praying too much. He will tell you off for praying too little. Have a glorious vision for what God can do in this crisis. So pause in prayer. Now, under that title of Al Shaddai, the Almighty God, pray again for the things over your life and the life of your family that you have not yet seen come to pass. Remember that he is the Almighty One. Do not give up. Bring those things again to him. This could be the moment of breakthrough. Pause in prayer. Now, another name that he gives himself is uh, Jehovah Rapha. Jehovah Rapha, the, the Lord our healer. Um, we have a very hurting family in the church. As I guess most of you know, Andy Jones lost his mother in a very uh, sudden illness, tragic situation, such a shock to everyone. Obviously, everybody of the family are devastated. We need God's healing touch on that family in their grief and sorrow. We need healing balm to cover them all. So can we now just pause and pray and bring all of the Jones family to the attention of our God. Pause and pray. Now, it's a great opportunity under the God who heals to pray for all those that you know who are sick, uh, including those who've been um, suffering from an illness for a long time and you've not <coughs> yet seen your prayers being answered. Let's believe for a breakthrough today. Let's believe that God can do what we ask. So bring them to the Lord. You may want to bring Julian and Daphne to the Lord in their uh, crisis situation. So let's pause and pray. Then finally under this heading, let's um, thank God for the safe and uh, rather early arrival of Faith Wing, Tyrone and Helen, need our prayers we need to pray for the growth of this child given what has happened in the past let's pray for just god's rich blessing on them as a family pause and pray now another name of god jehovah jireh the lord our provider let's now pray over matters of god's provision so obviously during this lockdown situation, the church funds have taken a hit. Um, we need to pray for miraculous provision. We have much that we believe God's called us to do, but we won't be able to do that unless we see God's uh, releasing provision upon us. We saw it right at the beginning of this crisis when we received uh, 25,000 pounds unexpectedly. God can do it again and again and again. So let's pray for God's provision for our church. Pause and pray. Now pray for those that you know who are in financial need, who need jobs or who need house moves. These are provisions that we need to see happen. Uh, we need to pray for Ben and Amy for, so they can move from Holt to Wyndham. And I don't know if you know, but in the last few weeks, uh, three uh, couples have expressed a calling from God to move from where they are and to come and join us at Wyndham. Um, that's really very, very special. Well, two of those families are going to need to move house. So pray for them also that God makes provision for them. Pause and pray. Now, fourthly, Jehovah Shalom, the Lord of peace. We're very much aware that in lockdown, many people have struggled with their mental uh, uh, well-being with their mental health um, let's pray for all those that you know or just generally over the church for those who are suffering with mental illness that they see an extraordinary breakthrough in their uh, tranquility in their stability let's pray for the gift of peace to come upon them pause and pray and then finally Jehovah Sigenu the Lord our righteousness. 
I thought it would be great to finish up our time together with um, just, just, um, just remembering the facts of our glorious salvation and the gift of righteousness that he's given us. So this is going to be a time of finishing with praise and thanksgiving. Thank him for the fact that he's forgotten our sins. Let's, let's uh, thank him that as far as the east is from the west, so he's removed our sins from us. Remember that he has rewritten our sinful history, so now it's a righteous history. Let's remember that we are now in his sight perfect and spotless. These are great things to give him thanks for. Let's thank him for the fact that his grace not only covers uh, our sin, but that he uh, gives us through his grace the power to conquer future challenges and temptations. The power to say no. Let's thank him for that. And let's thank him finally that we're no longer a slave to sin, but we are a glorious slave to righteousness. Such is this transformation that we're a new creation in Christ. These are all wonderful truths that we can finish our prayer time in giving thanks. So should we do that? So uh, just in a moment, pause and pray. May God richly bless you. And I'm looking forward to being with you uh, at our first prayer meeting at the Hub on the third, uh, Monday, the third of August. God bless you.